How you doing, Steve Noble, Noble Moto? What we're going to do today is we're going to change our oil. Real straightforward, everybody should not change their oil on their motorcycle. This is an 05 Dyna. Pretty much all of the Dynas are going to be about the same process as this. Um, actually, all of the Dynas are going to be the same process as this. And quite a few of the FLH baggers are going to be the same process because they essentially run the same motor and trans. Um, you know, same oil pan location and all this and that. Uh, the soft tails are a little different. They have, you know, the oil tank up here and the sportsters are the same way. Uh, but even still, this uh, process pretty much still applies to almost any other metric motorcycle on the road too. Honda, Kawasaki, Jeff, Suzuki, whatever. Yeah, man. Um, so we're going to step right to it here and uh, get going. Um, one of the things that get asked a lot is what type of oil do we use? Uh, since I just did a big bore kit on this thing, I am still breaking in the engine ring, so I'm using conventional oil. Once the engine is broken, I will switch to synthetic oil. An engine will, synthetic is such a good lubricant, an engine will not break in properly with synthetic oil. You have to use conventional dinosaur bone stuff. Um, so, using 2050, because that's the way it's recommended. Using Castrol, because it was on sale. Got a brand new filter. I'm not endorsing Wix, though it's what I use. Uh, if Wix wants to send me some free stuff, yeah, I'll take it and endorse your product. Also, got a run of the middle little plastic oil pan right here. You can pick those up at any auto parts store. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so we're going to go underneath the bike here. And whenever you're looking for a drain pan, there's always a nut that is kind of like absurdly large in comparison to everything else. In this case, it's this one right back here, behind the clutch, um, towards the back of the pan. There is another bolt uh, in the center of the pan that is the transmission drain plug. Uh, that's for the transmission oil. We are just doing the engine oil today. So let me move the light there where you can see it. Sorry about the shaky cam there. Now we're going to take our 5 8 wrench here. And light down pull up shouldn't have been that tight so crack it loose there move the light there so you can see a little bit better get your pan underneath the uh, drain plug there very important now the oil goes into your pan Let's switch sides here And pull that out of there just like that. Drop the oil pan or oil plug into the pan, so we'll just have to clean that off. Uh, as the oil drains, uh, just so you know, there's a little magnet here on the end of it. You can see a little clump there. So that's a little magnet that picks up metal shavings. So we're going to clean that off before we put it all back in there. That catches any little metal shavings that are floating around your oil. That way they don't end up back inside the motor. Now your nose is not draining very quickly. Uh, that's because the fill cap is still on the thing. So we're going to go around the other side, pull the fill cap off, and it'll be like taking your thumb off the top of the straw, and the fluid will drain out faster. And we're going to go down to the fill cap right here. We're going to pop that sucker off right there. We're just going to set it up off the side just enough so it's getting air gap there. If you go underneath, you'll see oil hopefully you can see that the oil is draining much faster now filter I'm sorry a lot of people struggle with see if you can't move the camera when you take the oil filter out you get oil all over this down here and it's hard to clean out of here one of the guys that took my 101 class once suggested use some aluminum foil and make a little drain pan out of it proof that you never stop learning. So I don't remember the guy's name, whoever he was, thank you very much. This is a tip I still use. We'll just fold it over there a couple times and we're going to slide her on up in there. All right, so next step, we're going to take the drain plug right here and we're going to wipe off that magnets on there. Wipe all the uh, all the oil off of there. Get nice and clean because this is going back in your motor. K 
Check it out. Make sure the magnet's clean. Yep, it'll be a little cleaner than that. Check out the uh, threads on there. Make sure nothing's build up on them. Check out the O-ring. And um, now normally I would put a new O-ring on here. Uh, matter of fact, we will put one on here. So I'm gonna take a small screwdriver here. Make sure it's clean. We're just gonna hook underneath there if you can see like so. Hopefully it focuses. There we are. And we're just gonna walk it right up off of there like so. Whoop. All right, got a new O-ring here. Uh, sometimes they come with the oil filter, sometimes they don't. You can either buy them online in like packs. Um, I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can get a bunch of new oil O-rings. Honestly, it was not damaged, it's not smushed. You could probably reuse it a couple times. Worst case, you'll get a little drip of oil there. But um, you're calling that. So we're gonna take that O-ring. We're just gonna roll it back down on there. New O-ring there, just like that. And we're ready to reinstall the drain plug. All right, got our oil drained out down there. Still got a little drip going on, but we're gonna call that good. Take our new our drain plug. Make sure everything's clean right around here. It's a lot of grime down here. We're gonna take a paper towel and clean that off. Whoop. You only really have to drain it till you guys stop getting a stream. It'll drip forever, but that's the majority of the oil. So there's a fine thread. Be careful as you thread it back in there that you know you don't cross thread it. Just a real light finger on this. Should go in there nice and smooth. Get it finger tight. Slide drain band back. We're going to take our 5 8 wrench and at some point here it should tighten up. Alright. And just got to make sure it's good and snug there. There's a torque spec in your owner's manual. Torque it to that. And now go up the front get the oil filter. Alright, we're up here at the oil filter. Now you don't necessarily have to wait for the oil to drain. Uh, to take the oil filter off, but I only have one drain pan right here, so I kind of had to wait. We'll go right there. There's a lot of ways to do this. A lot of different oil filter wrenches. You can get the oil filter from K&N that has the little nut there on the end of it. I have this handy tool from Snap-on that Maria, uh, one of the women that took a couple of my classes, uh, she got me a discount on it. Yay. She works at Snap-on. So we'll just snap that right on there, no pun intended. And the way this works is as you turn the inner screw here, it should grab everything. So, so we're going to take it in there. And you gotta be careful, you have your crank position sensor right here. That little fucker's about $120. Put it on there so it grabs. Don't damage your crank position sensor. It should break free just like that. I'm gonna reposition it a little bit. There we go. Once you get loose, you should be able to take your fingertips. Whoop. Drain the oil out in the pan, as you can see. Oil is running down the aluminum foil. Thank you to guy who told me that. So we'll let the majority of it drain out of the oil filter. And we'll just set the oil filter off the side there. Got our new one up here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little oil here off our old filter. Make sure it's clean. And we're going to put a little dab there on our fingers. And we're going to wipe that on the seal there. I need to dab more. There we go. What that does is it keeps the seal from baking on there, um, and it makes your oil a lot easier, your oil filter a lot easier to move next go around. So got our new filter here. Once again, make sure it's nice lined up. Again, these are easy to strip out, so nice light finger touch there. 
thread it in there and thread it on. Now we're going to take it back off because I forgot to show you something. So if you wonder how tight to get these things, here on the label you'll see little diagrams. And it will show, you know, go up, step three here is go up till it makes contact. And step four, you may not be able to see it, but it says plus three quarters. So we're going to thread this oil filter on until the seal makes contact, then we're going to turn it three quarters of a turn. Mm. Nope, come on. Eh, you'll have to take a word for it on that one. Sorry, I'm a mechanic, not a cameraman. Doing my best. So we'll thread that up there. Right there makes contact. You can see our little, there's a little number right there that's stamped into it. So we're going to use that as a reference point. Almost there. Pull the aluminum foil out. Let that drain down there. And we'll take a rag to get a hold of it there. You should be able to get this tight enough on there with just a heavy grip. You can always reuse the tool to tighten it back up, but usually with a clean hand and heavy grip, I can get it on there. So my number's now pointing straight down, so it's about three quarters of a turn. So we're going to call that good. Or the, or the uh, right side of the bike. Got our funnel here, nice and clean. So we're going to take this dipstick, pull it on out of here. Try and drip oil anywhere. We're going to set this in a clean location where it doesn't lay down. And then we're going to take our clean filter, whoop, stick it down in the fill port there. Take our appropriate weight oil, in this case it's 2050, check your manual, and uh, always go with the heavier weight, at least here in Ohio. So, I'm going to take that, pour the oil right in there. Try and fill it up too fast and overflow it. Let it drain down a little bit and catch up. While it catches up, cheers. Take your dipstick, in case you're wondering. Now Harleys are set up to be checked with the oil, of the bike on the, check the oil with the bike on the kickstand, not staying up straight. We have two marks on here, I don't know if you can see or not, full hot, at a court. With on the kickstand, target should be somewhere about three quarters of the way up the dipstick. That's after you let it run for a second, which pumps up the entire oil system. Let it run for a second, make sure the oil light turns off, shut it back off, then check your oil. It should be somewhere around half to three quarters of this bar right there. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Like that. Slide your dipstick down in there. There you have it. If you like what you see, subscribe. The link below. Check out my webpage. Check out the Skidmark Garage in Cleveland, Ohio. Take a class from me or just join Skidmark. Be part of the community. Everyone's welcome there. That's all I got.